I would remind the right honourable gentleman that for 44 years of its 71 years of glorious existence, it is the NHS that has benefited from Conservative policies and Conservative government. Because we understand, we understand that unless you support wealth creation, unless you believe in British business and British enterprise and British industry, you will not have the funds. Unless you have a strong economy, you will not be able to pay for a fantastic NHS, Mr Speaker. And that is a lesson that the Honourable Gentleman, right Honourable Gentleman, simply doesn't get. And I, 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 struggled to, I, struggled to, I struggled to see the country, I, I struggled to see the country he described in his description of the United Kingdom today. Because the reality, the reality, Mr Speaker, is that unemployment is of course, down under the Conservatives to the lowest level since the 90s. And crime is actually down a third since 2010. We have record investment, record inward investment in this country. £1.3 trillion pounds coming. That's fantastic new electric car factories. But order! Order! Me, me order! Mr MacDonald, you really are at times a reckless delinquent. <laughs> Calm yourself, man. I know you get... Very irate because you feel passionately, and I respect your passion, but I don't respect your delinquency. Calm yourself, man. Take some sort of soothing medicament, and you'll feel better as a consequence. The Prime Minister. Because I, I, they don't like it, but the truth is there were more homes built in this country last year than in any year in the last 31 years, bar one. Uh, wages, wages, wages are now outperforming inflation for the first time in a decade. The living wage, the living wage, a conservative policy. Say, which I am proud to say I, I championed in London and was then stolen by our wonderful Conservative government and put into a national policy. The, the living wage has expanded the incomes of those who receive it by £4,500 since 2010. That is a fantastic achievement and it is a Conservative achievement. The, the right honourable gentleman asks about trust and who can, who can, you, who can you trust to, to run uh, the How can I, how on earth? And he asks about Iran. Uh, yeah. Mr. Speaker, yeah. uh, a gentleman, uh, a right honourable gentleman, who has been paid by press TV, yeah. uh, who, uh, who, uh, who repeatedly sides with the mullahs of Tehran rather than our friends in the United States over what is happening in the Persian Gulf. How incredible! But we should even think of entrusting that gentleman uh, with the stewardship of, the, of this country's security. Uh, but worse than that, by far, Mr Speaker, this is a right honourable gentleman who is set on an economic policy, together, together with the, 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 shadow law, the shadow chancellor who was sacked by Ken Livingstone for being too left-wing. He forged a budget, sacked for forging a budget. He would raise, uh, he would raise taxes on inheritance, Mr. Speaker. He would raise taxes on pensions. He would, I'm, I am answering. I am telling you, Mr. Order, 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 Mr. Lavery. You're another overexcitable denizen of the house. Calm yourself. It would be therapeutic for you to do so. There's far too much noise on both sides of the house. And I fear that the noise on the front bench is proving contagious. And I note certain backbenchers who are becoming overexcitable, and they must restrain themselves. And I know the Prime Minister will, of course, be both passionate and restrained. The Prime Minister. Uh, it is only with an effort that I can master my feelings here, Mr. Speaker, because the right honourable gentleman will not only put up taxes on inheritance and pensions and corporations, he would put up taxes. He would put up taxes on income to 50p in the bar. the forger of the budget of 1984, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, he would put up, give him a chance, uh, he would put up taxes not just on homes but on gardens, uh, Mr Speaker. And he speaks, about, he speaks about trust in our democracy. He speaks about trust in our democracy, Mr Speaker. And I, I have to say a most extraordinary thing has just happened exactly. today. Did anybody notice yeah. what happened today? Did anybody notice the terrible metamorphosis that took place, like the final scene of Invasion of the Body Snatchers? At last, at last, this long-standing Eurosceptic, the Right Honourable Gentleman, has been captured, he has been jugulated, he has been reprogrammed by his Honourable Friends, and he has been turned now into a Remainer. 
wants his, the, he has turned Labour into the party in all of all the flip flops he has performed in his turgiversating career. That is the one for which I think he will pay the highest price. Because he is this party now, this party, this government that is clearly on the side of democracy in this country. It is this party, it is this party that is on the side of the people who voted so overwhelmingly in 2016. It is this party that will deliver the mandate that they gave to the, this parliament, and which, by the way, this parliament promised time and time and time again to deliver. And indeed, the right honourable gentleman and all his colleagues promised to deliver it. And the reality now is that we are the party of the people. We are the party. We are the party of the many. We are the party of the many, and they are the party of the few. We will take this country forwards. They, Mr Speaker, will take it backwards. Yeah.